So before jumping into the player health and damage system when interacting with the enemies, uh, trying to flesh that out before we even have anything to really test it against again, I think the best thing to do is actually take a break away from the player class at this stage and we'll implement the basic enemy class to begin with and then our bat class and we can check that against the player when they interact with each other. So for the time being we will in fact close the player class if you still have that open and inside of the blueprints folder I'll create another folder again as we're going to have a few classes nested in here. I'll call this one enemies and although we'll only be creating one enemy in this set of videos I did want to introduce the idea of inheritance and show how we can create a kind of hierarchy of different enemy types with a base class accounting for a lot of the more generic functionality and variables. So we will be taking that approach and then you can easily extend this to your own other enemies such as mushroom characters or stationary kind of enemies or anything that you really wanted to add in. So for our base class we're going to right click in here, we'll create a new blueprint class and I'm actually going to reuse the paper 2D character class again. So if we find our paper character, the reason being is that if we ever did want to add detailed kind of AI implementations into this and this will have everything ready to go in that character movement system which will automatically be set up to account for navigation volumes and how to interact with them. Not only that, this will also have our flip books and everything else like that that we need to go for animating and setting things up and including the gravity, the capsule colliders and everything that we've been using. So for this one, this is going to be our base class. This will be the parent class that all other enemies inherit from. So we're going to call this one BP underscore enemy base. Now what we do inside of the base class, we try to keep the logic in here as generic as possible. So we account for everything that every child of this class might need to do. So that would be things like potentially movement, but maybe even that's a bit too specific because like I've already mentioned, one of the first two ideas that came to my mind were the enemy mushrooms, which would need some kind of movement quite likely. And then the second one was the turret enemy. So I've already come up with an idea of a character that I might want to put in that doesn't move at all. So that could be too, too specific, but they will all need things such as health values, a win, lose kind of death state when the player interacts with them, maybe a damage causing state and things like that. So that's slightly more generic that all child classes will probably need. Now, the other good thing about using this paper character we also have all of the other things that child classes will need as well. So we have our capsule collider. So again, we already have the collision properties of all child classes set up and ready to go. And we also have the sprite component. So again, all of our child classes are going to need to be visually represented somehow, probably with a paper 2D sprite because we're using a 2D platformer here. So again, this has a few of the components already in here that we're going to need in the future. I'm not actually going to fill this. The reason being is that this is going to make sure that if we ever forget to provide a visual representation for our child or inherited classes, then by leaving this empty, that's going to be a very clear indicator that in the child class, we've made a mistake and forgotten to do something. What we will need in here though, is a couple of variables. So these are going to be our health trackers. This is going to be very similar to our player character class. So we'll have a float value. The first one I will name default health. And I'll copy this, so Control and W to copy this, and we'll just call this one health. And in the same way, we want this to always set the health at the start to be the default health. And let's set the default health. We'll give these a default of 100 as well. We can change this in the child classes, as you'll see a bit later, uh, but we'll just assume that they all start with a flat 100 like the player does. The next thing we're going to want to do is add in a damage system. So again, all of our child classes, anything that inherits from this is likely going to need to take damage at some point. So we can go back into the event graph here. Uh, we can remove the functions that we're not going to need, which should be pretty much everything for now, actually, and come in and add the on any damage. So that function that we've used before, the event, any damage, we basically want to do the same calculation to take the health away from what's being passed in. And in fact, saying that, we can just jump back to our player. And inside of here, because we've, if you've done the same thing as I have, named everything the same way, we can actually just pinch this. So we'll copy this from one class. It will realize that the names match up and we can just pass this in here. So ideally at this stage, again, we're going for a very kind of basic minimum MVP kind of minimum viable product for this project. 
but this is where you might want to start looking into things like components, reusable components, like a health component, because we're already kind of copying logic between classes. So this means that this could be used as a kind of component or interface. So we don't need to keep redoing this. But for this, again, we just want to get things working. And this isn't necessarily bad coding practice, but we also don't want to take hundreds of videos just to get a simple platformer working. So this is going to update the enemy health whenever we take damage. And we already have the next part of the logic ready as well here. So we're not going to show any visual health representation. We can skip this bit, but we may as well go ahead and check the health again to make sure we are tracking whether or not we're dead. We can also copy this and we'll make sure we don't copy the player died function, but we will be implementing something very similar in our enemy class. So we copy all of this, we'll come back over here, we'll paste this into the event graph. We're going to have one small issue and that is that we haven't made this boolean yet, but if you ever get that you can see we've got a slightly white line above this which means this uh, value doesn't exist so if we press compile we have an error nice and easy to fix this we can right click somewhere near that white line and we can tell it to create the variable is dead so we now have that tracked in here as well at no extra cost to us so we're now doing the same thing so that we don't have the ability like we didn't want with the player where we don't want to die more than once we could have something where the player continuously jumps on an enemy and puts it in a constant kind of death loop which could be quite funny now that I say that, but it could also look a little bit buggy and not quite be the uh, the mechanics or the results that you want. But we're doing the same check here. So if the health is less than or equal to zero, then we're dead. Again, I'm fully aware that we're clamping this, but just to future-proof our code, we're also going to make sure that nothing slips through this use case and we don't have a an enemy at some point with minus 50 health which is still alive and also if it's not dead so we can't multi kill it multiple times then we will kill our enemy make sure that we set is dead to be true and then we're going to make that function again and we'll call this one enemy died this one is going to be a little bit different i'm not going to put any logic in here whatsoever what i will do i'll just add a reroute node just so we've got something visual and a comment around the reroute node Okay, so a nice simple comment just to kind of tell us what this function is doing. So we've made this function, which is going to be left completely empty in the parent class, and it's expected to be used and completely overridden just in the child classes. Now we could do something here like calling the destroy function, but in the child classes we may want to do something such as, as I've put in the comment here, playing animations, particles, sound, and things like that. So we don't want to destroy the class before that's happened. Now we can change the way that functions are called, so we could call our child function first and then inherit the parent function afterwards and destroy it. But again, there may be some use cases where we don't even want it to be destroyed. Uh, maybe we're going to have corpses kind of littered around the... Uh, the arena maybe that's going to be part of a mechanic where they need to keep existing so to avoid any issues like that i generally don't call destroy functions in the parent function calls at all or in the parent classes but i will set up the function ready for that to be called so that the health is tracked and we know that the enemy has died it saves us implementing the same functionality over and over in all of our child classes but we get that freedom and flexibility to add in to the functions the unique logic and functionality based on the class which is calling that function so what we're going to do we will call this we still want this to be called even though nothing is happening because in any child of this class now when the health is being tracked and it's been classed as a dead enemy then this is still going to be called and we'll be seeing shortly how this can still be utilized in the child classes if you're not familiar with that but that is pretty much it so that is our base enemy class ready to go that's the for this project at least the variables and functionality that i think are going to be the most generic the things that any class that i could envision adding would need and they're definitely the only things that our bat class is going to need to avoid us uh, manually implementing this in that class as well so if you've been enjoying this topic, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, hit the notification bell so that you'll get the updates as soon as the next topic in this playlist goes live. And remember, if you wanted access to the full mini course all in one go, you can get that through the Skillshare link down below or through the gold tier Patreon or above rewards. Just wanted to give a big thank you to all of the people already supporting me over on Patreon. It is, of course, your support that allows me to make the more in-depth topics like this mini course for the channel. As ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.